that graciousness, mercy, benevolence is, yeah, is right. <laughs> There's uh, some cool things about words in Arabic, and that's why I like to kind of introduce the subject on the words, because it really helps me to understand that. Another thing that we say a lot of is Allah Akbar. When I was in Turkey the first time many years ago, that was still under the old regime, that if you said Allah Akbar, you'd be arrested. Because, yeah, they considered it you were calling to some kind of uh, uh, military action or something. If you said Allah Akbar, okay, grab this guy and put him in jail. And uh, I made that mistake. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I was so excited. Huh? Can I tell you the story? Because then I'll come to our main topic. Okay. When I was in Turkey, right? I wanted to go to the Blue Mosque. Anybody been to Turkey? Is it an amazing place? Yes. You went to Istanbul. And you went in and saw the Blue Mosque. Well, if you go in that side door, back to there's an ancient area where they used to make them do the very big outside thing in Canaan. Well, right in that same area in 1924 is where they hung all of the scholars. It was in 1922 uh, when Kamal Atatürk took over. They took all the scholars out and they hung them right there. That's where they all died. I went in that door. Let's show you what I said. I went in that same door and it was about time for Margaret, just like right about now. And when it was that time to pray, to go in there, there was a guy in there named Philip from America, and he was looking around, tourists were in there, right? That's one of the big tourist attractions. He was looking around, and he was asking in English, what are these guys doing? Are they going to pray? The guard that was in there, didn't understand what he was saying, said, get out, you go over there, you go over there. And the guard saw me, he said, you go over there, and you can go and pray with those guys. And I wanted to talk to this guy, I say, hey, I want to tell him about his life, he's asking, right? So, <laughs> And then the guard goes, you there, you there, I said, all right, whatever. So, but when I was praying, I was asking a lot that we have a chance to see this guy again, you know. So when we get done, I go out the door, the same door, and I went out, and there he was sitting there. He said, oh, thank God, you know, I'm doing that prayer. He said, oh, thank God, my prayers were answered, I was hoping you'd come out. And I could ask you a question. And I was thinking, hey, I was praying to the same God asking him to hold him here so I could get out there. We talked for about a half an hour. And he said, this is what I've dreamed of all my life. This is what I believe. And he made a show out of standing right there and entered his mouth. Now, wait a minute. Here's where it gets cool. When any somebody makes their show out of, what do we always say? Allah. Huh? How loud do we say it? Allah. You're really loud, right? So he said, I don't want to sit down. And I'm like, I'm not like Bart. My friend with me, this guy that's got that on the recorder, on his recording this other county. And he's saying, oh, 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 so she was running around in a circle. Oh, 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 oh. And here's me saying, it's the older comes the police. <laughs> and the big guy comes up to me, he's got his uniform on, and he grabs me, right? And he said, hello. <laughs> I'm working at our security for the, for the must on the <laughs> We still got that video, by the way. I think so. the government of Turkey then imposed the <laughs> No. <coughs> the government of Turkey, under the, the people that were running into that time, were really more secular than anything else. They just didn't want anybody coming along and trying to upset the apple cart. And it, it, it's known that some groups there, when they shot the low apple cart, means they were going to like tax or something like that. And so they saw that as some kind of a, a front against the government. But obviously, this guy worked at security, so it wasn't a real problem. He gave us a thrill for a minute. <laughs>
Alhamdulillah. I want to take a word, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a word and kind of break it down and, and kind of go from there after that. The word is the only word that I found in so many translations of Quran that they don't translate this word. Now, there's a lot of words that you can take exception to the way they come up with stuff. For instance, the word kephara. They usually say it means read. Well, the reality of it is it's coming from kapara a, which is the root, and that's the word for kari, which is a reciter, or the Quran, which is a recitation. Therefore, it probably should be better said, recite in the name of your Lord, etc. But still, they would translate that. Another word they deem they call religion. Barely the only religion with God is Islam. Have you seen that one? Uh, but deen is, means the way of life. Everybody has a way of life. Even an atheist has a way of life. So, but again, they translate it. The word of Allah doesn't mean God. Allah means God in Arabic. Is that right? Yeah. So Allah means the name formal, proper name of Almighty Allah. That's His name. So our Allah is Allah. True or false? Our Allah is Allah. You wouldn't say our Allah is Allah. That's the Catholic. So again, though they translate it, they say God. And okay, that's, I'm not taking exception to but I'm just sharing with you there's a word they don't translate. Who knows what word it is? Anybody? What word they don't translate? Yeah. Of course they translate that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter, they translate it. I'm just saying they don't even attempt to translate. I just told you they translate this God. What else? Huh? Who said that? How do you know? My answer is kind of cheating. He, uh, he said it's first. <laughs> I'm sorry? How did you know? Because I, I watched one of your previous videos. <laughs> <laughs> Norwegian. 
Norwegian, Swedish. Do you want to translate into Swedish? There's a friend of mine before he passed away in the last person. He used to be the ambassador to, for Sweden to Morocco. Mama couldn't have. Our brother's from Norway, by the way. Anyway, they still say Islam. Why? Because the word Islam is way too big to translate to a single word. You can't. You can try, but you can't do it. <coughs> you want to play in the heart seat for
to come back to it, though, the idea of people being forced in Islam to do anything means it's not the Islam. We have some of our sisters, mashallah, wearing niqab, covering their faces, yeah? If anybody forced them to do it, that wouldn't be Islam. It has to be by their choice. Sister wearing hijab, it has to be by her choice. If she doesn't do it, she's in trouble with Allah, but you can't force her to do it. And let's just don't pick on sisters. Let's talk about brothers. Ready? Are you sure? Are you sure you're not? Can't wait. He's ready. Who knows what I'm going to talk about now? Beard? <laughs> Somebody asked Prophet Muhammad about the lecture. You know the hair that flows here? Left, he told them, leave it alone. Yeah, literally, that's what he said. He didn't say grow it. Can you grow your beard? Allah has to grow it, right? Brother asked me one time, he said, make you all grow my beard. I said, I can't, that's sure. <laughs> he said, what does that mean? I said, it means you, you want to have power beside Allah. Allah said, nobody got power beside him. So, I can't ask you to grow your beard or ask God that this guy's going to do it, but I'll ask him to make you stop cutting it off. How about that? Because maybe he won't grow it. Hussein Yi, one of our friends from Malaysia, originally from China, he only has like five strands hanging down. Nothing he can do about it. You know, I'm going to use it. I can't help it. It just comes out of that. Anyhow, so we're told you can cut above the lip up here. In fact, you're supposed to keep it from rolling over. And, you know, my, gra my grandfather used to call it a cookie duster. You know, get a doodle on and dust off the cookie board. Yeah. <laughs> Really good. I want to submit to God. All right. 
And be sincere. Boy, oh, you know, I want you to be sincere too. That's a good thing. And in peace. Yeah, boy. As a Muslim, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> After I came into Islam, I learned this, you know, the meaning of the word. I was so excited. I felt like I uh, really it was an amazing thing. I used to attack Islam. Maybe I'll tell you that story someday. You would like to know about that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, I tell you what. After I got into Islam, I learned these words, this meaning. And I went back to the same people I used to preach to down along the Texas Mexico border. And in the old days, I used to play music and go down and preach and things like this. Well, all of a sudden, now I go back to the same place I was before. <coughs> I've been gone a while. And this old lady, she's about like 80 years old, she come up to me and she looked at me and she said, Child, what's the matter with you? I like that when somebody called me child. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? She said, well, you're growing a beard and you're wearing a dress. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I said, I became a Muslim. You can't do that. What? Oh, you can't do that. I said, why? You're not from over there. <laughs> I said, excuse me? <laughs> from where? Wherever they come from! <laughs> now, this is for real. This is for real. She's a sweetheart. I didn't want to hurt her feelings at all. And she's so nice. She's one of the kindest people you've ever met in your life. And I thought, you know what? I need to communicate to her so she'll know what Islam really is. Let me try. I said, well, let me ask you something. I forget her name. That was 22 years ago, but I asked her about her name. I said, uh, you believe in God? She said, you know I do. I said, don't you want to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven? That's the Bible. She said, she said, you know I do. And I said, and you want to surrender to God? Yes. Submit to God? Oh, you did. Obey his commandments? You know that's right. Yes. And be sincere. There's no other way. I said, yes, you're right. And be in peace with whatever he gives us. Yes, yes, that's it. I said, well, that is the word Islam. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, Islam. 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 He's correcting me. Okay. Islam. Whatever. And whoever does Islam, the verb, is a Muslim. I said, look, in Arabic, mu is a prefix that is the same as er is in English. Walk, er, talk, er, think, er, stink, er. That wasn't in Anyway, so in Arabic, you put a prefix before it. Adhan, the call to the prayer. Mu'adhan, the one who calls the prayer. Sali, salah, do the prayer. And the musali'in, those who are doing the prayer. And so you put more in front of it, that doesn't work on everything, but you get the idea. Oh! So a Muslim is one who surrenders, submits, obeys in sincerity, and is in peace with God. Oh! And you want to be like that? Huh? I said, you're a Muslim. No, I'm not! <laughs> I said, why not? Backpack, don't have a backpack, put it on the refrigerator. But put a 
with that. And it tells you about guys who see our latest project, which we are constantly trying to raise money to keep it on the air because it is all over the United States, Canada, on the smartphones, not on the dumb phones, on the iPhones. And also, you can find it, besides the app, you can find it on the antennas in Dallas, uh, Los Angeles, New York, Columbus, Ohio, and the end of the So, a lot of places you can watch. And that, that was my commercial. I just stick them right in where I want to. Now, I told you, I asked you if you want me to tell you a little bit about how I got to slam. Anybody want to know? You want the long version or the short one? How many say short version? How many say long version? I think I had one up here that said short version. Short version. Okay. Short version. <laughs>
So if you imagine, you go miles away, and you're, you're asking him, do you believe in Abraham? It's his grandfather. <laughs> it's not big about Anyway, so he said, yeah, uh, we believe. We have to believe in, in Abraham as a prophet. He said, yeah. Well, did you ever hear about David or Suleiman or Moses? Yeah, of course, these are our prophets. I said, really? Yeah, but you don't believe in the fresh man of Jesus. I said, yes. Well, I believe in Jesus. Hold on. Miracle birth. Yeah. Matter of conception. Yeah. Miracles. He did miracles. Yeah. Well, the gay man back to life. Yeah. He ascended up to God. Yeah. He's with God. Yeah. Be back in the last day. Yeah. Man, there's hope for this guy. <laughs> I can bring this guy around, you know. I just got to work on that little cross thing I'm getting. So we started working together. We spent the next three months, that was back before Easter, and we stayed together until the middle of July. And all along, we traveled together all over North Texas. Everywhere we went, he's riding with me, I'm driving him up. I'm trying to debate with him about everything. And I could never win the same debate with him. Whatever I would bring up, he'd bring more proof in that. Didn't matter what it was about faith, scriptures, whatever it was, he'd always beat me. Finally, a friend of mine, another preacher, he had a big cross that he used to carry. Sometimes he'd take that big cross, 14 foot long, and he'd drag it down the road, you know. People stop, put him on TV. Anyway, he had a heart attack, he went to the hospital, I'd go visit him. So one day I brought my friend, the Muslim, Muhammad, his name Muhammad, I brought him in there. And afterwards, my friend told me, he said, don't ever bring him back in here. I said, why? He's a Muslim. And I tried to tell him, no, I see you because, and he said, no, I don't hear any of that. Do you stay away from them? You're going to get a demon. I said, what? You're going to get a demon. And whatever you do, don't read that book. That Koran. Okay. All right, whatever. So, it happened. Mom would come in one day, put this book down on the counter. Great big, beautiful looking book, you know. Dark, royal blue, with gold trim on it. Came from South, you know. He laid it there. I said, Is that your Koran? He said, That's the Quran, yes. Would you like to read it? I go, Oh, uh, no. Then the hospital, he has a, another bunkmate 
they're sharing the room with This guy's a little bit, you know, strange. I tried to talk to him, he just stared at me. I told him, well, you know, where are you from? I asked him some questions. He said, I'm from Venus. Venus, Texas. Well, Venus, Texas. He said, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I don't want to understand this guy. I came there a couple more times and then I tried to, you know, preach to this guy. And he'd just stare at me. And he was in a wheelchair, so I started pushing him around, taking places, letting him downstairs to the garden they had and stuff. Finally, one day, he started crying. And he said, You know, uh, you're such a nice guy, and I've been really bad to you, and I'm sorry. He said, I just, you just don't know what I've been through. I had a heart attack, and I've been suffering a lot here. And I don't know why I'm having this problem. He said, I want to confess something to you. I said, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, I'm not a priest. I'm not a Catholic, okay? You don't confess to me. He said, I know you're not. Because I am. I said, what? It was a Catholic priest. So I started telling him what I was learning about Islam. Because I thought maybe this is, you know, it can help me figure out how we can get this Muslim to Christianity. You know? Protestant and Catholic together. Hey, look at this guy. <laughs> but he told me that Catholic priests have to study Islam. We already know about it. I said, what? He said, yes. He said, and everything you said is true. I said, what? He said, yeah, they pray five times a day. They pass on the gun. He started whipping it down. I'm like, whoa. That surprised me. How come I never heard about this before? Then, when he got out of the hospital, I invited him to come out to our home, stay with us for a while. Well, he was convalescing. He could help me kind of give some Christian dawah to the, to the Muslim, yeah? So he came with me. Now, the Muslim is living with us. My father's there. It's his house, his wife. Me, my wife, my daughter, all of us there in the same great big old house. Give you an idea about that. So when he got out there, we got the three staff tracks, and now we're going to start first night right off the bat. Ah, well, let's talk about the Bible. So I pulled out my Bible. About that time, my dad pulled down his Bible. Now my dad's Bible is KJV, King James Version. But I got the Revised Standard Version, which has a lot of better manuscripts that are relied on, more accurate, and explains some of his things in the KJV. So right away, we're in an argument over that, me and Dad, right? Then my wife pulls out her Bible by Jimmy Swagger called Good News for Modern Mass. And that's totally uh, relaxed. You know? <laughs> Very relaxed translation. And now we're into that. Now, here comes, now wait a minute, up to now, we're just dealing with Bible's versions, but all with 66 books. The Catholic Bible has 73 books. It's a good thing we didn't have anybody that's orthodox. Their book was at 78. But anyway, we're into it now. Blah, blah, blah. And this book, no, mine, and yours, and that. And all the time, here's a mom just sitting over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, this is going the wrong way. Stop, Paul. I said, let me get turn the focus away from this nonsense. By the way, your mom, I mean, that virgins and that Coran got that you guys got. One, and it's only the Quran and the Arabi, and every single on the planet. All of these books are identical. There's not a single dot that is different, not a chestra, not a doma, nothing different from one or the other. Hundred percent. You're like. But this is this. But we don't rely on that. We don't rely on this, we rely on the spoken word because all Muslims are memorizing the Quran in our Huh? Now I think, wait, 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 how did we fall into this trap? Hold on. You're telling me over a billion people, well then it was about a billion and a half, but we're now 1.7 billion. You're telling me that all of them are 
are reading Arabic? He said, yeah, and most of them are not Arabs. 88%, by the way, are not Arabs. How many in this room are Arabs? Arabs, basically. Okay. Now, put your hands down. Now, Muslims, not Arabs, put your hands down. Now, put your hand down if you don't want to memorize the Quran. <laughs>
it over. They said, no, they lined up like monks who stood there silently. And then they bowed, prostrated. It was beautiful. And then they left. I said, okay, what kind of music did they have? <laughs> he said, they didn't have any music. I said, what? How are you going to worship God with no music? <laughs> I was a music minister, by the way. So you know what was my role? I never go to music minister. I'm the one who sold them the organs and pianos and would go make sure it all worked properly and play the music. That was my deal. So you come to me now and you're telling me these guys don't even have any music. Wow! What are they missing? Yeah. So then, a few days later, the priest said he wanted to go back to the mosque. Only that day they didn't come back by the way. I started getting worried. Maybe they had an accident. We lived out in the country. In fact, what's funny is a side issue. Gaidas TV's channel is broadcasting from the same antennas that were just down the street from my house where I used to live up there. Huh. Just by coincidence. And there's another way to stick the commercial in there for Gaidas TV. But true story. Anyhow. When they finally did get there, it was dark, and I saw the Muslim getting out of the car, I recognized him right away, you see that bald head shining out there. But then if somebody else get out the other side, this guy's got on a white dress and a pillbox cap on his head. I looked at him and I said, Pete? His name is Father Peter Jacobs. I said, Pete, did you become a Muslim? He said, a shadow died in that little ball. I said, no. No way! Man, I used to be in the television business too. That broadcasting. So I pulled out the cameras, the tripod, set everything up. In the old days, it took a lot to even just whip out your phone and go like that. But back in 91, you couldn't do that. By the time I set it up, he fell asleep, but I wanted so bad to ask him all the questions, you know, how old are Facebook all and all that. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. I went upstairs. This is my place up in the house, you know. I told my wife, I said, what do you think about that Catholic priest? Just to give him a whistle in our house, what do you think? I'm trying to say, see what she's going to say. Because really, everything I learned about Islam made sense. Direct relationship with Allah, nothing in between, no, nobody to confess to, nobody to give money to, just deal straight with your Lord. I love it. It made sense. So I'm asking her, what do you think, Catholic priest? She said, I want to get a divorce. Stop. I said, what? Uh, what happened? Hold on a second. What, what, what are you talking about? She said, a Muslim can't be married to a Christian. I said, whoa, oh, man. You got it all wrong. I never said I wanted to be a Muslim. I'm just excited for him and his story. And no, 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 no. If you think I want to, I will never be a Muslim. Ever. Ever. I'll never be a Muslim. Okay? And besides, he told us that a Christian man can't be married to a Muslim lady. But the other way around, be okay. She said, that's what I'm talking about. I want to be a Muslim, and I can see you don't want to be. Okay. Back it up. Let me try that again. Hey, good news. <laughs> Seriously, I did that. I said, good news. I, too, wish to be a Muslim. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> she looked right at me and she said, you're a liar. I said, no, I'm being serious. She said, you're a liar. There's no way. I said, no, seriously, I just was trying to see what you would say and then I thought you because in the... She said, you're a liar. You're either lying right now or you're lying five minutes ago when you said you wouldn't be. Get out. I was halfway down the stairs, you know, and I realized, hey, she just kicked me out of my mother's house. <laughs> How's that work? Hmm. So I went down, I woke up the most, it's about one o'clock in the morning by now, you know. I'm waking him up, I'm saying, you and me, we got to talk. He's like, whoa, what happened? Let's go. 
So we started walking down those old country roads and talking. I'm doing the talking, he's doing all the walking, and I'm just about to go, because I don't know what I'm going to do. My head is just swimming. I, I think about Islam, I think about my life, I think about my position, my job, my work, what I do. The, the, the people that I know, the congregation, man, now, you know, but I traveled back then to go a lot of places, and along the way I would stop there and give these lectures and stuff, and I'm like, oh man. Then he said to me this, by now the sun is just about to come up, you know, father time. He said, you know, this is not about you and the congregation. This is not about you and the people. It's not about you and your father, not about you and your wife. It's not about you and me. It's about you and your Lord. You're talking to the wrong one. You need to go talk to him and sort it out. And then he said he's going to go do his fight. His morning prayer. I'm thinking, now wait a minute. I really expected more than that. I mean, you could at least put a little hammer hole down here or something. Come on, be a Muslim, you know, and I'd be like, okay, yeah, why not? <laughs> That's how he left me. So I went out behind my dad's house, and I found a place back there that looked pretty good, you know. And I said, I want to do what the Muslims do, you know, they kind of like face in that direction over there, whatever. And, you know what? Get that hat off me, you know, put my head down on the ground. And with my head on the ground, the same way we make stuff to I was trying to think what I'm going to say. By the way, I, I'm pretty good at coming up with words. It doesn't matter what, or when, or where, or how. But on that day, there was only two things coming to my head. God. <coughs> God. I didn't think of anything else. Again, that's where we got the name from. God. Fancy lights going off, and what like rainbows and doves and birds. No, what it was was inside of me. I could see real clear. The problem for me wasn't the outside; it was the inside. That I had to learn how to deal honestly with myself <coughs> and my relationship with my Lord. And until I do that, I'm never going to get it right with anybody else. That's the real problem that people have, whether or not they want to get themselves right with them. Because until that happens, nobody's going to be happy. And that's what I'm not to be right. And I knew I have no option. There's not an option for me. Except to deny it. So, I went inside, watched the make me on the shower. Came down, went to my friend, I said, I'd like to drink this now. So now, me, an ex Catholic priest who is now Muslim, a Muslim religion, I'm standing there and they're giving me a shat, a laila, a little But I shat with a Muhammad, a Muslim. I bear witness, there's none to worship except God alone, alone. minutes later, here comes my wife now, and she had a scar up there on her head. She said, I'm ready to do the same thing you guys do. She had an interest in that. It wasn't right away from my dad, that's a whole other story, but he also came to Islam. He passed away and came and lived with us. Beautiful stories. My daughters pulled him out of the Christian school and raised him at home. He went to Muslim school on the weekend. <coughs> But for the most part, he went all the home. He went all the way through high school. Graduated 16 and 17. One of them, she's now married to one of our brothers who studied and became a bachelor. He had a bachelor in pregnant. That was living with us across the street from one of the biggest monsters in Ohio. Imagine. And it all came about. One guy from Egypt. One guy from Egypt. The lesson for all of us is you can't die who you love. So
one who died for you, whoever you are. <coughs> the other message is, you do have to try to the message out the best way you can. Be patient with people, and then let them do what they want. Alhamdulillah, 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 who are learning to honor the Muslim. Praise be to the one who gave us the guidance to become and remain as his servants as Muslims. For any questions, see me after Juma tomorrow. Give me back your business. Salam alaikum. Before you go, a few announcements. Uh, the MSA, we do have uh, our t-shirts outside for sale to support our club, so we can put on more events like this and others. Uh, also tomorrow at the mosque, like I said, at the Islamic Center of Tucson, uh, that's on First Street, we have events uh, um, starting at 6 o'clock, we'll have another lecture, and then uh, after our night prayer, we'll have another lecture as well. So we hope to see you all there. Uh, and um, make sure you have your questions ready for them, like you said, after uh, Jomar prayer, which is at, uh, finishes at 1.15. We start at 12.15. Uh, thank you all for coming once again. Uh, have a wonderful night and uh, uh, say a few words. Assalamu uh, alaikum We have one more announcement. Uh, Shakti Sivestas. Um, he will ship his best us. And uh, of course, you know, he kept on talking about Gaia's TV. Um, there's a few more singers here, inshallah ta'ala, for those of you who would like to come and get some. They say worship the creator of uh, creation, www.guideus.tv, and that, that is Sheikh Yusuf Estes' website. And if anybody uh, would like to support or anything like that, you can always fill out the pledge forms, inshallah ta'ala, we have them here. But feel free to come and get some proper singers. I'll be here for the next five minutes, inshallah ta'ala.